Hi folks, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about Windows Subsystem for Android and what it enables for Android developers. I'm Hamza Osmani, a program manager at Microsoft. I'm Andrew Leader, also a program manager at Microsoft. So Andrew, what if I told you you could expand your Android app's total addressable market to millions of Windows devices without rewriting your app? That sounds amazing. I wish I had some way of doing that today. Well, you do. Windows Subsystem for Android lets you do exactly that and lets you run your existing Android apps on Windows 11. So if you're a developer looking to expand your app and the reach of it to new form factors, devices, and untapped markets, Windows Subsystem for Android can help you achieve that. So I can easily run my Android app on Windows without rewriting it? Exactly. We'd love to show you how easy it is for an app developer to get an Android app available on Windows simply by optimizing and submitting to the Amazon App Store. By submitting your app to the Amazon App Store on Windows, you can have your Android app available to users who already spend hours every day in front of their Windows devices, enabling scenarios and use cases that you might not previously have been able to reach. From a user's point of view, how awesome would it be for me to have my favorite mobile game or app open on one of my desktop monitors during my regular work streams without having to pick up my phone? Once your app is available on Windows 11 devices in the Amazon App Store, a user with an Amazon App Store account and the App Store installed on their device can download and run it as usual. We should note, though, that Windows Subsystem for Android is currently in public preview and available only in the U.S. market. Developer participation in the Amazon App Store on Windows 11 is currently part of a closed beta and only open to a selection of apps. We look forward to opening this up to all developers as we expand over time. Let's take a look at how installing the Amazon App Store works. Here I have the Microsoft Store open to the Amazon App Store page. You can see that users can discover Android apps in the Microsoft Store, such as in this Recommended App Store Apps section. We can see Kindle, the Wall Street Journal, and a ton of other apps. Let's go ahead and install the Amazon App Store. Installing this will silently install the Windows subsystem for Android on your Windows 11 device. And voila, just like that, we've installed the Amazon App Store. Since this is the first Android app we're launching on this device, you can see the Windows subsystem for Android initializing. Now that we're signed into the Amazon App Store, let's go ahead and install an app. I want to download Kindle. And just like that, I have Kindle available on my device. Now, let's go to Mario to talk about the Amazon App Store. Thanks, Samsung. Hi, folks. I'm Mario, Head of Developer Evangelist by Amazon. The Amazon App Store is finally now available on Windows 11 devices to all US-based customers. In this current public preview phase, we have released over 1,500 games and apps across a variety of categories, like entertainment, news, weather, sports, and many more. As new apps are constantly being added, and as we expand into new locales, the App Store will add hundreds of thousands of new applications. If you already have an app within the Amazon App Store, you're in great shape, leading up to general availability, and we'll learn how to connect and debug your apps in the upcoming slides. Instead, if you have not submitted your app yet and want to unlock new customer base with the reach in the hundreds of millions of customers, scan the QR code here or input the short URL you see on screen to sign up for the program updates. While you're there, browse technical documentation, how-to videos, and explore what new feature the Amazon App Store has to offer you. Making your app discoverable across two stores has never been easier. Now, here's how you can connect and debug your app on Windows. As an Android app developer, here's what you need to do to connect to the Windows Subsystem for Android virtual machine and optimize or debug your app. First, you must meet minimum Windows 11 requirements, as well as the min specs you see here on the screen, and be using a Windows 11 device in the US region with an Amazon App Store account. After that, simply install the Amazon App Store from the Microsoft Store, and that'll automatically install Windows Subsystem for Android, as well as the Windows Subsystem for Android Settings app. To test and debug your app using ADB, Android Debug Bridge, you have to connect to the Windows Subsystem for Android virtual machine first. 
The settings app is where you can enable developer mode and find the IP address of the virtual machine to connect to. For a valid IP address to appear, you must have an Android app running on your device, such as the Amazon App Store. After that, simply run an ADB connect command with the IP address, and you can now install and sideload, debug your app on Windows subsystem for Android as you would with any other Android device by using an ADB install. Let me show you how easy this is. First, ensure you have an Android app running. We have the Amazon App Store app running here. So let's go ahead and open up the Windows subsystem for Android settings app. We have developer mode on and we have an IP address available to us. Let's copy this. Going over to command prompt, we can run an ADB connect command with that IP address to connect to the virtual machine. And just like that, we're connected. We can now perform a streamed install of this APK that we have of Tuno. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that we've now just installed TwoNote on Windows Subsystem for Android. For developers that primarily work in Android Studio, we have great news. Windows Subsystem for Android is recognized as an Android device. This means you can run, test, and debug your apps directly from Android Studio. All you have to do is connect to the virtual machine using an ADB connect command. Once we're connected and we go back to our app, we can see Windows Subsystem for Android show up as a launch target. We can go ahead and launch our app. And just like that, we can debug our app right here within Android Studio on Windows Subsystem for Android. Now, while you don't need to change your code to bring your Android app to the Amazon App Store on Windows, there are some best practices that can help you optimize for the best user experience on Windows. First, let's hear from Mario about how to determine at runtime what store services your app should use. If your application depends on services from other app stores, you will need to use Get Installer Package Name to identify where your application comes from. This lets your application surface the services that you want rather than relying instead of the device type. If your application is downloaded on Windows 11 device from the Amazon App Store, it will return the installer as shown here on the slide with the string com Amazon Venezia. This string will alert you uh, to use Amazon services like in-app purchase and ADM and other services that Amazon supports. Thanks, Mario. Now let's talk about another best practice, optimizing your app for windowing and resizing. Android apps on Windows run in their own resizable windows, just like other Windows apps. This means you should consider how your app works at really small sizes down to 586 density independent pixels and up to really big sizes like when on ultra wide monitors. By default, your app launches with an initial window size of 1280 by 720. And when the user resizes the app, the last window size will be remembered for the next launch. This default behavior likely works great for most apps. But if your app is best experienced at a different starting size, you can modify your initial window size by either specifying your preferred window size in your manifest or by using dynamic launch bounds to programmatically specify your starting size. Android apps are also resizable and can participate in Windows 11 features like Snap Assist, where users can easily arrange their windows into productive layouts. Additionally, your app's display density might even change when users move windows from one screen to another in multi-monitor setups with different display densities. Let's take a look at how to support resizing in your app. As we can see in our sample app, the UI responds well to resizing, but if I type in something and resize the app, the text is lost because my activity doesn't restore the text from the activity bundle and the text disappears. For most apps, there's an easy way to fix this. I'm gonna open my Android manifest and add a config changes declaration. This basically says, please don't restart my activity when the following configuration changes happen. For example, when the orientation changes or the screen size changes, my app's activity will no longer restart. It's important to include all the values seen here, especially the smallest screen size value, which only triggers when resizing across a 600 dp size, and the touchscreen value in case the user drags your window to a non-touchscreen monitor. So we can deploy our app and 
After making these changes, we'll see that the text no longer disappears when resizing the app. As we saw in the demo, for many apps that are already using responsive layout controls like constraint and linear layout, to support resizing without restarting, your app should simply be able to specify the config changes your app handles. However, if you want your app to not resize and instead be placed into Compat UI mode, you can specify a resizable activity to be false on your launch activity or at the application level. When a user resizes an Android activity that isn't resizable, the app's content will be scaled. And if the aspect ratio has changed, the app will be letterboxed and a restart to resize button will appear. Let's see an example of this. So let's imagine our sample app has a lot of complex UI that's difficult to get working with dynamic resizing. A simple way to make our app work on Windows without the whole app restarting when it's resized is to simply specify resizable activity false. And when we deploy our app like that, what will happen is when you resize the app, instead of actually resizing and restarting the activity, it will add letterboxing and it'll actually scale your app. And this little restart button will appear informing the user that they can restart the app to fill the window, but that will restart the app. So really quick and easy way to get your app working if it's really complex to support full resizability. Now let's take a look at the different input devices developers should consider when bringing their apps to Windows. When it comes to input methods, Android apps on Windows should consider keyboard and mouse as the main input methods alongside touch and pen to ensure the best user experience. This means accounting for several keyboard and mouse specific events. Many existing Android apps already support keyboard input and keystrokes for common use cases. As an example, some games may already support movement facilitated through the W, A, S, and D keys alongside touch input. For keystrokes that aren't anticipated by the Android framework, apps need to handle that behavior themselves. Keystrokes such as the enter key for submitting text input navigation in an edit text field, arrow and tab key navigation to toggle through elements, and control-based shortcuts such as control Z and control Y for undo and redo within apps are just some scenarios that you should consider when optimizing your app for Windows. If a text control is focused, Windows Subsystem for Android injects characters translated using the Windows keyboard layout via a hidden Android input method editor. If your app uses custom text controls, you should ensure that these are following Android best practices. So for example, when a user navigates an app using the tab key, the input focus is passed between elements in the order that they appear in the layout. Let's take a look at that. Here we have a sample Android app to display navigation. This Android app has five buttons, as you can see, and we have the layout open on the left. Let's use the keyboard tab key to navigate through our app. As you can see, focus is passed from one button to the next in the order that the buttons appear in the relative layout. Let's go ahead and tweak our layout a little bit. Let's add the next focus forward Android attribute to all of our buttons. This attribute will help us specify an ID that we want the focus to shift to when we press tab. Let's go ahead and relaunch our app now. Here's our app now running with the next focus forward attribute added to all of our buttons. As we press tab, you can see that focus is passed from one button to the next, but in the order that we've specified. So from button one to two, two to three, four, and five. In terms of mouse input, similar to keyboard input, many scenarios are automatically covered in Android. Scroll wheel actions, dragging, and selecting to highlight with the mouse are often automatically supported. Windows Subsystem for Android reports mouse down, move, and up events as touch events by default for compatibility with most apps that expect touch input. For pinch to zoom gestures on the trackpad or control and scroll on the mouse wheel, the subsystem will inject touch input to emulate a pinch to zoom gesture. If a text control is focused, then the input is reported as a mouse input to ensure text highlighting and cursor placement follows common mouse paradigms. However, developers might want to include optimizations for specific actions like mouse button clicks and pointer hovers. Pen is supported as well, including pressure, tilt, orientation, eraser, and the pen button. 
apps that support Android stylus input will just work with Windows Pen input. But let's take a quick look into how Android notifications are handled in Windows Subsystem for Android. Android apps can send a variety of notifications. Windows Subsystem for Android handles all these as you'd expect and mirrors them as Windows native notifications. This means that notifications appear and stay in the Windows notification sidebar as expected, and users can interact with them as they would on an Android device. Let's take a look at how that looks on Windows. So we built this sample app to illustrate notifications and how they appear on Windows. So this is just a basic Android notification. And as you can see, it comes in and looks and feels like a normal Windows notification. Image notifications also work. So we'll show you what an image looks like. And another cool scenario is download, like progress bar notifications. So let's see what that looks like. And as we can see, the progress bar is updating. And I'll show you the code just to show you that this is 100% normal Android notifications. And we didn't have to do anything to tweak that for Windows. And finally, the last type of notification that's really neat is notifications with buttons, like even quick reply notifications. So I'll pop this, I'll go ahead, close the app and say hi, and we'll see that our app gets activated with the text. Now let's talk about APIs and services. For Android developers with apps already on the Play Store, there are some differences when it comes to supporting your app on Windows. Amazon provides a useful suite of APIs, services, and features to modify your Android app to enable it to work with the Amazon App Store on Windows. For example, billing and cloud messaging are Google Play APIs and services that your app might rely on, and Amazon provides services such as Amazon in-app purchasing API and Amazon device messaging for you to use. If you're using Firebase in your app and you want to continue using Firebase, you might need to implement some changes as the native Firebase SDKs depend on Google Play services. Instead, we recommend using the Firebase JavaScript SDKs instead, which are supported in the Amazon App Store on Windows. Most Firebase JavaScript SDK features are supported, and there are plenty of alternatives for unsupported features, such as for in-app messaging or Crashalytics. We've now covered many of the common best practices that you as an Android app developer may need to know when bringing your app over to Windows. For example, how to detect when to use the Amazon App Store services and don't check the device manufacturer, and also windowing and resizing considerations, new input methods such as mouse, keyboard, and pin, and more. With all these optimizations, you can ene easily enable your app for a great desktop user experience and have it available to millions of Windows users. As we look to bring the Windows subsystem for Android out of public preview into the general public in the future, more and more users will be looking for their favorite apps on Windows 11. We hope you're just as excited as we are to enable new experiences and grow the reach of your apps to new customers.